video I really hate making um, Matt and Pyro now too has chimed in you know with their phantasmagorical quantum crapola and uh, you know just taken it to this preposterous extreme what the science says made preposterous claims for what the you know has happened in the past and what I mean they've rewritten history they've rewritten the present they're just it's disgusting how far they take this crap and it's, it's it's like arguing with a creationist that is such a perversion of the evidence. It's grotesque perversion. Um, really pisses me off. I oh, I, you know, and I know. Look, listening to this crap for some of you, it's just like, oh fuck, you're not gonna go with that slit experiment crap, are you? I mean, no, I'm not going to. I'm going to do it in as, as simplistic a manner as possible. But what, you know, these claims, I mean, Matt has said, oh, yeah, we've just, we've proven Einstein wrong, we've proved Darwin wrong, we've proved all science wrong, we re, we're we rewriting science. I mean, it's like all these fuckers, you know, you know, they really are desperate, you know, because the world really has changed. We've invented all the really cool stuff, you know, and uh, so, so they're just desperate to create some new science or some new world to live in because, oh, damn, I can't be brilliant anymore. You know, I can't do the Albert Einstein thing anymore because, you know, all the good stuff has already been Einsteined, you know, and, and so they're just desperate to find something they can call their own, you know, and see, <laughs> this is just such crap. Um, really preposterous, nonsensical. I mean, I'll, I'll, and there are two examples of you know Matt using oh yeah deterrence can't work on a on a, on a mind that doesn't have free will and Pyro's idiotic you know coin flipping thing. Somehow coin flipping proves that the world is you know subject to randomness and and uh, you know is unknowable. I mean bullshit. I mean all it proves is that we don't know the variables. But I'll I'll get deal with that later. All right, so the first thing on the whole quantum thing. I mean, all, all we're talking about here is probability. The word probability has absolutely nothing to do with spontaneous, okay? It doesn't even much have much to do with randomness. All probability means is that we haven't quite narrowed it down. We haven't quite, we can't, we don't know all the variables. We don't know exactly um, why um, something happened. So I could give you an example. All right, you know, 200 years ago when you fired a gun, you know, to, at something 30 feet away, guess what? You might hit a barn, okay? I mean, the bullet could end up in a lot of different fucking places. And it ended up in a lot of different places because we, people didn't really understand the dynamic of the projectile and the forces and all the rest of the crap. And so you had this probability. Yes, it would probably hit the barn. It wasn't going to go hit your wife in the head. No, it was probably going to go hit the fucking barn. All right, so you could narrow it down to a probability. And amazingly, over the last couple hundred years, we've sort of figured out the variables. We figured out what made the bullet maybe go in all kinds of places, and then we get it better and better and better. Now we can shoot a bullet, you know, 500 yards, and uh, you know, hit a fly in the ass. Okay, so we've, we we have figured out the dynamics, and we reduced the probability. So now the probability is really, really, really small, a little limited probability. Um, and, and that's the way it works. Okay, so now we're talking about these really tiny particles. All right, and we shoot them, we do our experiment, and yes, the particle hits the barn somewhere. Okay, we don't know why it doesn't go where we exactly pointed it. We just say, oh, fuck, it hit the barn somewhere. Now these assholes are saying that somehow proves there's randomness and spontaneity in the universe. It doesn't prove anything. Okay, and all the other evidence, every single bit of other evidence in our known universe, the evidence we have studied and played with for 10,000 years, all of that points to the fact that it's a deterministic universe, cause and effect. This bullshit quantum crap does not prove cause and effect does not, is not in play. And so here, I mean, I'll give you an example. Okay, so now, so what we're talking about here is they're saying an electron can hit the barn thing, okay? It can do a lot of different things to the barn, all right? It's not doing them over there, over there. It is, it is stuck within a probability. And uh, they're saying we have no explanation. There's, and there's, what they're saying is there is no explanation. The explanation is, is that the particle decides to go there, okay? The particle decides to fuck up. <laughs> okay, that's what they're saying, um, which is complete crap. All right, and so there's a million explanations. Obviously, all that little electron has to do is have character of its own. 
That's all. It has to have, maybe if it's, it has surfaces, maybe if it has square surfaces, that's going to change how it's going to end up in 14 different places or 43 different places. Um, and the whole particle wave thing could be explained by merely saying that the particle is in a spiral. That's how it, that's how it goes through space. All right, because if it does that spirally thing, guess what? That explains the slit experiment. That explains a lot. Okay, so it's just, you know, because it's at a different state at different times in its progression through time. Um, and, and so, you know, this, oh, it is just such, oh, so frustrating to have to argue this bullshit as the foundation for something. So this really is the same as some, some evolution, some religious fucktard saying, well, you don't have any missing links, and therefore, therefore man can't have evolved from no apes. I mean, it's the same motherfucking bullshit. Um, identical bullshit. All right, all we don't have is enough stata yet, okay? But there's nothing in the evidence that can, it cannot be overcome through more experimentation, uh, more detailed science. Unfortunately, the particles we are trying to study can't be studied, okay, in any reliable fashion. We can't look at them. We can only look at how they affect the world, all right? And so it's just, it's just such, it's such bullshit. Um, oh, all right, so let's get through some of this stuff. And like I said, the arrogance of Matt and Pyro is just grotesque, considering this weak science. And it is weak. Um, oh, it's disgusting. All right, so, and, you know, and the whole idea that the transistor was invented by quantum theory is just such a pile of crap. I mean, I grew up at the birth of the fucking goddamn transistor. I saw that transition from tubes to uh, solid-state electronics. Uh, before I was a goddamn teenager, I was playing with fucking transistors. Uh, there's nothing brilliant about a transistor any more brilliant than a light bulb, okay? You know why it took 10 years of development? Because they had to do 10 years worth of fucking experiments playing with little chips of goddamn semiconductor. And, and, you know, just for the people who don't understand, I mean, transistor is a simple concept. All you're really talking about is you got this high voltage, high amperage, right? A lot of electricity going this way. And you have to have some way to turn it on and off, to regulate it, all right, to control it. And the first transistors could only do that. All they could do was turn on and off, okay? But anyway, now they can regulate the voltage. And what you did is you put a feed current, you know, you had some way to gate that more, that larger voltage. And that's all it's about. So you just be able to take a really small current that you, was easier to manipulate and control a very big current that could blow everything up, okay, all the rest of your electronics. So you can't deal with this big, strong current, so you need some way to control it with a very small current. Um, so, and that's all it does. And so it uses a semiconductor, it creates a feed that, that changes the dynamic of the, the material so now more electricity can get through it. And it could do that by bending it or contracting it or doing a lot of different things to the dynamics of it. And we already knew all of that stuff before the transistor was invented. We already knew a crystal. You could bend a piece of crystal and create an electric current. We had thermocouples, which are two pieces of unlike metal fused together and, and now become a thermometer, basically, because now more current flows through them depending on the temperature of the two metals in the thermocouple. All right, so, the, so the, 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 the science was already there. It had nothing to do with some kind of quantum math or any of that other crap. It had to do with experimentation with what they had, and they had the simple goal of creating this very simple regulator. Uh, well, anyway, <clears throat> all right, I've dealt with the, the, the coin flipping thing. I mean, it really is just so stupid. I mean, the reason why there's the coin flipping thing is improbable, or, I mean, unpredictable, is because of the, there's too many variables. The surface of the metal, where exactly it's positioned, it's just, it's just impossible. It's just silly. The only thing limiting us not being able to predict it is the fact that there's too many fucking variables. Um, you know, and then, then um, the, look, the, and the bottom line is, is that if Einstein was still alive and he saw the computer age and he saw all this crap, um, it, 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 to this extent, I mean, he'd probably come up with some great, you know, brilliant way of explaining to you, though, these fucktards, that there's no way there can be a quantum effect because we don't see it in their goddamn computers. They work reliably. They do exactly what they're told. Okay, and it doesn't depend on any quantum this or quantum that. There's no irregularities. The whole idea. I mean, these solid-state 
breaking components. They can, they can theoretically last hundreds of years and do their job because of the fact that they aren't quantumly changing. They're not going through 250 phases of existence. No, they're, they're, you know, they're very reliable. Um, and our brain is made of that stuff. On this level, even if there was a randomness between 200 states of atomic existence, okay, so let's say a, a, an electron could change 250 different colors. It doesn't make any difference, okay? 250 colors is not enough um, um, change or distortion to have any effect on this level that we exist on. Th there's no way you can make quantum theory um, create free will in a um, wired uh, billions of neurons strong brain. Um, we are not a quantum machine. That there are, we could come up with lots of explanations uh, for the character of electrons that would explain why sometimes it appears to be a particle and sometimes it appears to behave like a wave. There are explanations, there are bent space kind of explanations like Einstein's uh, that will give us a, a, a model that we can understand regarding its behavior. But again, remember, we're talking about the smallest things on, in the universe. And, and these people are using the, the, the gray science, the, the blurry science, the fog of that science to create anything they want to. It's just such shit.